Well, Girls in Science this year has a very special guest speaker. She's an inventor, she's an author, a scientist, engineer, and Time Magazine's 2020 Kid of the Year, Colorado's very own Gitanjali Rao. Gitanjali, we are so happy to have you here with us right now. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Well, as you know, CBS4, you were one of our future leaders, so we are so excited to have you not only as the Time Magazine Kid of the Year, but our future leader as well. I mean, what is it like to be Time Magazine's Kid of the Year? It's it's definitely such a exciting experience, and I think it's really set up this platform for me to amplify my voice as well as solicit new innovators into this world of science and technology. So I'm super excited that some of the work that I'm doing inspires tons of other students across the world. I love it, and that is such a great picture of you on the cover of that magazine. I'm sure it's framed in the house somewhere. <laughs> It is. <laughs> as, as it should be. Now, when you get honors like this, how, do you, how does it help you reach and inspire other young women? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think there's a lot of different layers to it as well. But it's allowed me to really be that role model that I had growing up, right? And that I didn't even really have growing up. I got involved in science and technology after hearing about the work of Marie Curie and other fantastic women scientists in the field. But I think that to get girls in STEM, we really need to show them other role models. And that, this platform has allowed me to really be the role model that I wish that I did have growing up. Well, you are certainly going to be a huge role model to so many girls that are going to be watching you. Why are you wanting to participate in an event like Girls in Science? Ooh. I think that it's it's just really opened up this opportunity for me to um I guess really show that there's one Gitanjali and she's already making a difference, but imagine if we had, you know, thousands more of me across the world. Imagine the difference we could make. And right now, more than ever, we need to maximize innovation and creativity. And in order to do that, we need everyone. We need kids, we need girls, we need everyone from every single corner of life. And that's exactly what I'm hoping to do with this event. And you're going to be giving a presentation and you're going to cover so much. So we're just kind of at the tip of the iceberg during our quick interview here. How did you discover your love of science and all of the things? I can't even list all the things that you do, but your real love of these STEAM activities. Ooh, my, I guess there was never really one aha moment, but I, it all started to come together when I realized that science has more potential than just a baking soda and vinegar volcano per se. I think we've all been taught and told scientific concepts in a specific way related to coding or ro robotics and one that fairly I could never spend a whole day coding on a computer. But once I soon realized my passion was using science for social change, that's really when things started amping up because all I wanted to do was really put a smile on someone's face with the work that I was doing. Well, you certainly have done that. So you use, uh, going in a little bit more here, you've used technology to tackle issues ranging from contaminated drinking water to the opioid addiction to cyberbullying. So you've already knocked out a few big things here. What is next on your plate? Yeah, ooh, there's so much that I do want <laughs> to do, and that makes it so much more difficult to really choose what the next thing is. But I'm definitely looking at parasitic contaminants in water. I'm also looking at ways to prevent future pandemics and also making these innovation workshops that I run self-sustaining beyond me. But I don't know. Let's see what the future holds, I guess. <laughs> I think the future is going to hold so much for you. And I think having someone like you talking to kids will be so great because they'll get to hear someone their own age. You know, uh, I'm a lot older than the girls. And sometimes you think, oh, to make a change, you have to be, you know, in your 60s or something. So you're making big changes at your young age, which is so incredible. And so girls are going to get to watch you. What is something that you hope they take away from seeing you in action? Yeah, ooh, and I think there's there's so many things that I wish they would take away, but the biggest thing is that it is okay to dream big. And nobody's no nobody defines your passion but yourself. And I guess that's really what I needed to hear and what I'm so happy to really be putting that message out there is you can create your own future and you can build it no matter what anyone tells you. I think you could also be a motivational speaker in your uh, future as well. Thank you. I appreciate it. I do talk to people across the world and um, it just it brightens my day seeing me brighten their day. <laughs> I love it. Now, we know how hard you work in the academic world, but what do you do for fun? What are some of your hobbies? 
Yeah, all sorts of things. Um, I play the piano, I fence, I bake a lot, and I'm also working on my glider's license, my pilot's license, basically. So, Well, you are just a very well-rounded individual. I love it. So, Tanjali, thank you so much again. And for more information on this year's Girls in Science virtual event, just head over to cbsdenver.com for the full schedule and all the activities.